five, which is halfway through the ten step glide, even though I can do that with my hands, um, which is pretty hot, but uh, and the idea is that when we've got two, you would come with your steps one to five completed, and somebody would be there to help you to turn the requirements of step five into technology or an understanding of technology. So that's your aim to get halfway through this. Uh, reference guide by the next meeting. We haven't set the date for it yet, so you've got a bit of a, a leeway because we've got to get things rolling towards it. But it'll probably be six to eight weeks' time. So I've given out a, a reference guide on your on your desk, which you can see. So you can all, I don't need to look at it in, in detail, but that, that's it, basically. We've started off calling it a workbook, and then people found it too much to read and they didn't want it to be a workbook, so we've now called it a reference guide, which means you don't have to read it, but it will still guide you. It may end up being caught up before the end. And you'll see most of the things I've given you today are there, you know, just the four hats diagram, for example. And every step has got a quick guide in front of it, which just reminds you that back at base, what we're expecting you to do, or hoping you will do, you and one, two, three, four other people, depending on your organisation, will sit down and have a planning session using the particular tool of that step, and we try to guess what you'll need to, to run the session, what to do, who you're going to involve, and how long we think it'll take. And how long we think it'll take is a piece of string. Because if you're just Malcolm and somebody else, you probably whiz through it, especially as he's treated and he's had his four hats diagram done for him. So it'll probably take you five minutes to do step one. As you get on through the guide, the, um, the tools that we give you, the, the frameworks, get a bit more complicated. So there's one at step, uh, <coughs> step eight, when we get into technology specifications. And they start to look a bit more complicated. But I explain the frameworks, you need to worry about it. And uh, we end up at step 10 again, with the four hats right again, that's right at the end. And you think to yourself at the end of the, of the 10 steps, right, I know more about ICT now. I'm not going to set goals in these four standard five points. I'm going to think about what is my ICT strategy in relation to those four standard points. And it's at that point you might make the decision, well, as far as the clients go, actually, I don't want them to see that we use ICT. I don't want to deliver everything the way. In fact, let's take the website down because we haven't updated it for two years and it's not doing anything anyway. Or you may decide we want to deliver everything through the web and we want to use palms and all sorts of other things. And that's not wrong either. From the funder's point of view, you may have a strategy at the end of the 10 steps that you can specify which says, we know now how much ICT costs. It is our policy to charge you 10% of our ICT costs to every single funder in every single bid. That is our strategy, for example. And let the funders decide whether they think that's reasonable or not when you show them what the cost is. But that might be your strategy. And you will have your strategy as well for your internal processes, how much or little you're going to use ICT, and in terms of your reflection and improvement, when you're going to update things, how often you're going to review things. So your strategy will fall into this same framework that you're familiar with. And that can be all the strategy you ever write. You need to write a very, very complicated one. But you will have all this data held in these forms to help you make procurement decisions. So that's roughly how the reference guide uh, works. And I think if you spent at least an hour on each step in a meeting over the next few weeks, that would be a jolly good start. So it's not as hard as you thought, is it? So we said there's 10 steps, we said that each one's got an activity, a framework, a grid, a matrix, an exercise to do. And something I would like to stress is that at the end of every step, you will have a decision or a series of decisions or something to take forward in terms of a piece of information into the next framework. In the next framework, you'll take that apart, unpick it, and out of the bottom of that, you'll drop another decision about what to take forward into the next framework. So that's why we call it steps, because you know you really can use one to get to the next. And that, by the way, is supposed to be a light bulb at the top he's going to switch on, and not some kind of bomb that's going to fall and more people hit. But um, having said that, we did talk earlier today about the fact you might have to go around in a circle to revisit a step with new information. You might have to take it away to a supplier, 
or um, uh, even PC World and say, I'm thinking of something like this, have you got anything like this? And if you've got it on a piece of paper, you'll get better advice than if you go in there and go, um, or try to look and see what Pentel means or whatever. Um, so you can get off the step ladder at any time with your framework, your piece of paper, with that template to take it to some kind of ICT expert, which might be here, it might be a peer, it might be an expert online, it might be one of these volunteers that we're going to try and plug into the programme, it might be a trustee, it might be somebody you know, it might be a local change-up programme. But we know you're going to need expert advice, but armed with this chart or this framework, you'll be able to get better advice, more informed advice and more requisite to what you want. So that's how that works. We've also developed some of the toolkits, and they're all online at the moment. The most important thing in the toolkits, I think, is these framework diagrams, the templates, so that you can choose to print them out bigger like that and work on them in A3, for example. Um, and so you can access them electron in electronic format. And when your ideas are all tied in, <coughs> you can type into them and put them into a plan, copy and paste them into a plan. So the work that you're doing here, you can actually use, copy and paste it into a funding bit, uh, put it in the appendices of your business plan, put it in your annual report, and it's already there, ready done, and all you have to do is explain it. Is explain it. The second most important thing in the toolkit, um, I think, is, it, is if you do want to write a plan, there's an ICT plan template, and I'm going to give you one of those to look at at the moment, to take away. It's just a Word document, and it's even got some sample text in it. And what it says is download this from the online area. If you want to write a plan, have it all bound and looking nice, that's fine. And what it says is, this is section one, write this, write something like this along these lines, stick diagram one in here, discuss it. Section two, decide what you're going to say in section two, stick the diagram in, discuss it. So you're actually using the diagrams that we've given you. Have you not got any on the table? Have you passed one on? Maybe only bought ten. Sorry about that. I'll pass them on to you later. Not too, not too much to worry about in detail at the moment, but you can see what we're getting at. If you can gather the information into these frameworks, then drop it into a plan, it will be easier to do than starting with a blank piece of paper. 